Welcome back everyone. This is your first time watching. My name's Derek and this is my 1960 something Caterpillar D6C dozer. The head is off. The turbo's off. If you want to see why, check out some of the past videos. But basically the head's cracked and the turbo's blown. So we've been working on some other things while we wait for parts. Come along, I'll show you what we got going on this week. These levers right here, that one and that one, are for the rear winch. I believe this is the brake. This one here is the clutch, and neither of them move at all. Those, I believe, are just cables, and they run back through under the seat, kind of come out here in that one. And they go into this box here. I've taken this cover off. Couldn't really get them freed up. I believe they come down into this cover here. So off camera, I took that bolt out and I got water coming out of there. been about a uh, couple days since I sprayed all this down. This here is the clutch leakage. And back there is the brake linkage. It comes over to this red bar, goes down into there and just pulls the brake band. Uh, they're still frozen up. Let's pull these pins out and see if it's the actual cable itself not moving or if this is seized up. Yeah, that moves. Clutch moves, so I think we just got a cable seize up problem here. To get the cables out, there they are in the housing. They come out there and they run up under, that's the fuel tank. Cab. See them here. Looks like they run kind of under the seat there. Shouldn't be too big of a problem to get those out. After hem hawing around for the longest time on this stupid clutch cable, uh, I got it out. Got it most of the way out. Turns out there's like a steel ferrule in here. Kind of holding it down you know i loosened this uh and it was still stuck so i just kind of punched it out and it seemed to work so now i'm just working on getting this cable pulled all the way out of the machine and we're almost there we can take this inside and try to get it freed up i looked this part up online see how much it costs they went almost 400 dollars for this cable here so it, it's worth it trying to get it loosened up. A little breezy out there today. Okay, so we just got that cable off. And I think we'll just let her soak with some, what do you call it? Penetrating fluid. All right, I think it's time for some science. I'm gonna do an ATF acetone mix. Let's, new. Don't have any acetone. I wonder, let's go over here. I wonder if you can do mineral spirits instead of acetone. Need some ATF. Where's the ATF? What do we got over here? Diesel 911. Automatic transmission fluid. Let's do a little concoction here. of that in, 
hundred of that in. Perfect. Dump a little of that down in there. A little of that down in there. And that's not taking very much, is it? Let that sit. Well, I spent a couple days dumping our, our concoction down there. Also used some blaster, dumping it down our clutch cable. And I was beating on the end and it would not move at all. So I ended up cutting this, uh, just a protective little rubber sleeve over the cable. And this is what we got. So there's the uh, winch end, up there's the lever that goes in the cab. I don't think this cable can be saved. It's just, if you look at it, it's just, just too rusty. Uh, however, the brake cable, I think we can save, so that would, that would help us out. We'll see if we can get this freed up and moving. And that way we only need one cable that we need to buy. Yeah, these cables are just a lost cause. This one, I, you know, I was beating on it. You can see in there, there's the actual cable. It's just been in, exposed to the elements too much. Just seized up. Um, all we have to do is find a cable that's about the right length and has these threaded ends so we can put these clevises on it. So I don't know if maybe like a heavy duty parking brake cable or something like that might work. So I think that's what we're gonna do. Try to find one of those on eBay or something and go from there. All right, here we got the uh, thermostat. And since we had apparently an overheating problem on that i want to take this out clean it up test it in some boiling water so let's see if we can get this out maybe get it out geez why is that in there like that? i think it just pull right out of there can't really pry too hard on this. This piece here is just riveted in. Oh shit, see, that's what I didn't want to do. There she came. I cleaned up all the parts here. And I'm trying to get this back together. This spring goes inside and this clip holds the spring on. It's held in by two pins that come in from the bottom. And then I believe those were just kind of peened over or something. Problem I'm having is those pins are kind of worn out. So I'm thinking we just give them a little bitty tack weld right there just to hold them. If that works, we will test this in some boiling water or some hot water anyway and see what happens. Should be able to release this clamp and it'll stay. Yeah. See the gap right here? I think that's need to put this back out a little bit. So that seals it and I think, I don't know how it works, probably a difference in thermal, you know, whatever, science stuff will cause this to then water will go through it 
instead of by it. If you didn't catch that, Okay, for today's science experiment, we've got the turkey fryer, pan from the wife's kitchen, a propane tank with hardly any fuel. So yeah, this should work out perfect. So according to the book, this thermostat should open at 160 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't think we're gonna get there. Our propane is out. Let's try this test again. I got uh, some more propane anyway. So we'll get this fired up, see if it opens. Climbing quick. Now, I don't know, does the whole thing need to be submerged? We kind of have the top out of the water a little bit. 148. 150, it's bubbling. There's 160. Where are those big air bubbles coming from? Does that mean it's working or not? Is that thing lifting? I think it is. It's 171 is what it's saying. It's definitely lifting. I think it's working. Yeah, appears to be working. So you guys see this gap is opened up. I think it was about 170 degrees when it opened. And this should close back down once it cools off a little bit. So that's almost closed all the way now. Good, good. We verified this works. I think I need to verify that the actual temperature gauge in the cab works as well. So let's uh, figure out how to get that out and how to test it. That reminds me, you guys have not gotten to see the uh, cab or anything of this thing. So I'll give you a quick tour while we pull that gauge out. So here's our temp gauge that we need to get out. Quick overview of the cab and controls. We'll start over here. This is our winch brake lever down here our winch clutch down there on the floor that's your blade tilt so if this is your blade it'll tilt left and right this lever is the main clutch so that's disengage there pull it back it's engage you got blow plugs left start on the right steering clutches left and right track and then you got two brake pedals down there left and right this lever here is the reverser so forward on the lever is reverse on the tractor pull it back and that would be forward gear shifter here So it's a five speed, there's a neutral, you know, just like a car, first, second, third, fourth, fifth. And then this lever is your blade up and down control. Try to get that gauge out of there. Someone scratched some writing in here. Can't read what it says, Debbie something. I think it's been painted over. All right, so this uh, cowl here is just, I think it's just fiberglass held on by some 916 bolts. We'll get these out. You know what's cool about these old tractors? Let's see if you can see that. Every bolt is branded with cat on it. I don't know if they made their own bolts or had them custom made, but I thought that was kind of cool. Come out of there, you. Hmm. 
Yeah, this gauge looks a lot newer. It's got that look to it. It's just unplugged then or what? Looks like that's crimped on there. I'm gonna see if I can find the other end of this red wire. Might have to test it that way. All right, there's our dash up there. I traced that red wire down and it comes to here. Interesting, there's nothing on the end of there. Should be some sort of thermocouple or what have you. I'm looking on the parts book. So we follow this kind of braided looking line. Comes over to here. And that says to cylinder head elbow. Here's the cylinder head elbow. And there is where I believe that whatever should go in. I don't think I took that off. So after looking around for that thermocouple or that temperature sending unit piece, I was not able to find it. And I'm 99% sure I did not remove that when I was taking the head off. I looked that part up on eBay. I'm able to get the gauge, the wire, and the part that plugs into the coolant elbow for 16 bucks with free shipping. So that's a no-brainer. Just buy a new one that we know works. At least should work. We can test it when it gets in. Now some updates on some other stuff. Uh, I've been having a, not the best luck with parts. There was a head on eBay. Seller said it came out of a D6B dozer with a D333 engine. And he had, it had been on eBay for like a month. No one was bidding. You know, it, he kept relisting it every week. So I wasn't 100% sure that it would work for our application, but for the price, I figured why not? So I threw out a bid of 850 bucks. Sure enough, at the last minute, someone sniped it and I, I, I didn't think anyone would bid on it. So lost that deal. I'm gonna have to go with some aftermarket new head that we know will work, but is gonna cost significantly more money. So that's that. Uh, water pump. Tough time getting all the seals in. I think I've got everything ordered correctly and they should be here this week. So I'll definitely make some video of rebuilding that. Turbo, I have not really worked on the turbo too much trying to find where to get that from. But <clears throat> again, that's another expensive component. Uh, good news is that our temperature regulator or thermostat did work just fine. Uh, more bad news, our winch cables are completely shot. Overall, not much done again this episode, but we're slowly working our way there. And you gotta remember this is kind of a, a first world problem type deal. That Caterpillar, I don't need it to make money. It's just a hobby and just having fun. So try to step back and look at it that way, even when we experience some setbacks. So I hope you guys are enjoying this. Let me know uh, and I'll hopefully have another video here soon on some more progress. Thank you very much for watching and we'll catch you next time.